Hi everyone. So today's agenda is handling a JSON response that we get from any XYZ API, but that is varying every time. Now, what is varying in it is uh, we have one of the properties inside that response, which is coming as an object at some times and which is coming as list of object at the other time. So then how to handle this is what we are going to see in this video. So stay tuned. Now, what I mean to say exactly is this is the kind of the response that I'm getting. Now, what all do we have in it is in all I have three attributes inside it. One is total price, one is line item and one is category. Okay. Now, inside line items, what I meant to say was this line item that we are getting now, we are getting it as list at some times and we are getting it as object as some times. Now, uh, list as in here, you can see list of objects. So this is one object record in which we have quantity and name. This is another record and this is a list. Whereas other times we are getting response in this manner, which is we are getting total price as this one line items. You see now it is not an array or it is not a list of object. It is just a single object. It just has one record in it, which is quantity name. And then the third attribute that we have in our response is category. Okay. Now here you can see that line items has curly braces, right? So which denotes there is only one object record. But here you will see that in line items, we have a square bracket, which denotes that it is an array of what? It is an array of objects because this denotes the object. Now, what I could possibly do is in my Apex, I have written two uh, Apex classes or the wrapper class and stuff like that to handle this. So what have I done is wherein I'm getting the list, right? Like this kind of a response. I'm going to handle it with this class. Okay. So what I've done is there are two attributes, category and total price. And the third one is line item. So line item also are created as an object here. And then I'm taking an array of that object inside this main class. Whereas in this class that we have invoice with object, I have category, I have total price and line item is also an object rather than a list of objects that we had over here. So it is just a plain, simple object over here. And in that object, we have these two additional properties or attributes. Now, the issue is that when we get the response, we wouldn't know, right? Like what would be the response? So let's say coming here. Okay, by the way, let me also tell you what is the end result that I'm expecting. So what I want to do is in my lightning web component, I want to display these things. I want to display the total price. I want to display the quantity of the line item name and also the category. If it is a, uh, you know, list of that, then for each record, I want to display the line item quantity and name and then uh, total price and category. And then again, for the second record, total price, quantity, name and the category. That's what my end result should be like. Now, just assume one thing. Uh, you can ignore this that I've written over here. You don't need to look into that. What you need to look into is the JSON response. So just assume that this JSON response, we are getting it from some XYZ API and it's not something that I have built. Just assume that for a while, okay? Now, what we are going to do is... Uh, I'm using that JSON response and I'm trying to deserialize it. Now for deserialization, what have I done is, like I showed you, I had made two classes, one with the array of line items and one which is just a normal object uh, type, okay? So here, when I deserialize, I'm deserializing with this class and not with the list one. So what I'm doing is I'm saying JSON response comma invoice with object dot class. And that is what I'm getting in the response. <clears throat> now, what we need to do is to run this thing, we need to call this class. So what I'm going to do is in my uh, Apex class, I have given a variable, a Boolean variable called return list. Okay. 
if it is return list, it is going to give me a JSON response, which would be like this. Okay. And if I give false, then it is going to be give me a response, which is like this. Okay. So first I'm giving false. So if I give a false, the response would be like this. If I give a true, the response would be like this. Okay. So I've given false first of all. Um, and here what I've done is I've printed the response dot category and response dot line item dot quantity. Let's see if we are able to get the response or not. Okay, so let's check our debug log. So here we get the category also and we get the quantity also. Quantity is nothing but the one inside the line item, which is 20 and the category is category one. So we are exactly getting that, okay? Okay, now what I'm going to do is, here I'll send true, okay? Now the moment I'll send true, what will happen is I'll get this kind of a response. But what's happening in our Apex class is, here you could see, I am deserializing it using this class, right? This one. But it's going to break. Why? Because we are getting list of line items, right? And not the simple object. So I'm not using this one. And I wouldn't know in advance that which one should I use, right? So what I'm going to do is, let me put true and I'm going to get that list of line items. And let me show you what will happen. So we get an error. So then our wrapper class and the logic that we have written fails, right? Because it is sending a list of line item and we are trying to get an object. So it's not able to handle that. So now what do we do? So one solution to this is we will not deserialize it in our apex. So I'll just comment out this portion. The JSON response that I'm getting, I am directly going to send it to my LWC. So now I'll write a LWC class, uh, I mean, sorry, LWC component. And record page, record quick action. I think that's it. Okay, and just let's deploy. By the way, for those who don't know what I'm doing here, like what is this tool, can go and refer to my another video, which is Lightning Studio, how to uh, create Lightning Web Component without using Visual Studio, and you will find out what am I doing. Okay, now here what we are doing is, let me just go to the JS. Let me import that. Uh, Apex method. Sorry, one minute. I think you guys cannot see it. Okay, so this is Lightning Studio and this is where I've created a Lightning component. I, the name of the Lightning component is show JSON response to what. Now, what am I doing is I've come to the JS uh, of that lightning component and I'm just importing this from my class. Now you guys know that my class name is JSON response maker. So that's over here. And then we have this method which is get JSON response. So that is what I've written over here. Now what am I going to do is in my connected callback, I am going to call that method
Uh, I guess there's some error. Let me figure out what is it. Okay, I think the issue was that I was not closing the, uh, putting the closing bracket for connected callback. Now I've added that. So this is what we are doing. We are just calling this apex method and we are getting the result. Okay. Now here, what we need to do is the first thing that we need to do is we need to pass this JSON response that we are getting. So what am I going to do is I am going to pass it inside another variable called final result and I would be doing json.pass and this result. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to find out or let's say first we will display the uh, one minute. Okay. So here we have right now the total price and category are immediate property or attribute inside this. So we will be directly able to print that. So what I'm going to do is console.log. Uh, I would say category. And then I would say final result.category. Okay, and the next thing that I want to print is the total price. So I would say total price and then I am going to say total price over here. Yeah, it is total price, okay? Now, uh, so it's deployed, I guess. Let me go to my org. And what I'm going to do here is, I just edit the page and put that lightning component that we have built over here. And let me just save. Okay, I think it is saved. I'll go back. We have not displayed anything on the component as of yet. All that we are doing is in the console.log. So I'm going here and you could see that the category printed is category one and the total price is 50,000. Because that's how that's how I made it, right? Now I want to display the quantity and name. But we are not sure over here that the line item that we are getting, whether it is going to be an object or whether it is going to be an array. So now is the final solution that we are going to do. Now what we are going to say is, I would come here. First of all, you need to know one thing. This, the name of the property remains the same, irrespective of whether it is coming as a list or whether it is coming as an object. So what I'm going to say is there is a method in JavaScript, which is called array.isArray. I'll just say array.isArray. And final result.line items. So what would happen is, if this is an array, then it would go here. If not, then it would come here. Okay. Now, uh, for now, we have given it as false. Like when from here, we send it as false. Okay. So when we send it as false, you know that the response, the kind of the response that we are going to get is like this, right? It's going to be an object kind of a thing. So what we'll do is
dot quantity okay and dot name because that is what is the property right now i am going to say quantity and name and we'll have to do a json dot stringify Okay, so here we are, and let's refresh. Now you see, we are getting the quantity as well as we are getting the name. But let's say I send it as true, then what would happen is it would come inside this because so here, right now, by the way, why did it come over here is because it was an object. It was not an array. So this one is false and it's not true. That is why it came in else. But let's consider the scenario where it is true. Then what we are supposed to do is we are iterate. We are uh, supposed to iterate through the uh, list of objects that we are getting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say object dot keys final result dot line items for each and the key that we have, I'm going to say quantity and line items key dot quantity and same way I'm going to do it for name. Okay, let's just save it. So this time, what we had done is we had sent it to true, right? So when we sent it to true, we were getting this as the response. What is this returning? It is returning this kind of a response. So for each and every line item that we have, we have displayed it. So this is how it is looking like. We have the category, we have the total price. Then for the first line item, the quantity is 10. Product is product one. Second line item, the quantity is 20 and the product is product two. So this is how you can handle this thing in JavaScript when you don't know that the uh, response that you have received in that one of the property is list or is it object. So this is how you can do it. So in case this video helped, or you found any knowledge from it, then please like, share and subscribe and do not forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you so much. Bye.